nobody was trying to get paid off of this to begin with. Like, mm. if we're talking about it from the real aspect, we did it because we wanted to impress girls. Let's be real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like half the stuff, real talk right there. Half the stuff there, we're like, most of us were nerds and geeks. Like, we were like, no attention. And we thought, you know what? If I do this, they're going to have to notice me, you know? Yeah. Like, if I'm spinning <laughs> on my head, if I'm beatboxing, like, people are going to go, yo, what was that? How'd you do that? Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox Creative. Killer, killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer, killer, podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or as central as you need to be, could be, want to be, anywhere else and you'd be charged to be. So it's a pleasure having you here. Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gknifteyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. Um, big shout out to all the sharers and carers. People have been clocking from the beginnings, from the entry. Uh, we've got a lot of episodes to cover, but none more pressing than this conversation I'm about to have with this gentleman. Uh, not only have I travelled the world round and round with this fine man, but uh, he is a proficient uh, performer, artist, break dancer in his own right. I say b-boying for the more specifics. Um, and yeah, the host of many, many activations that go on in the world of b-boying. Um, if you don't know his name, then you've been severely locked in some cupboard. Um, this is Swifty inside the place. How are you, gentlemen? I am good, Kels. I'm real good. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good. I feel like every time I see you, it just takes me back to those amazing moments that we shared on stages together, brother. Bro, like from the minute we, we stepped foot on stage, it's just been vibe, vibe, vibe. And it just goes off. It's like it, it's like it's just a continuation. It never goes. It's never like, oh, OK. It's just like, oh, yeah, we pick up where we left off last. And then it goes to the next one and to the next one all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know what? Uh, you know, that rapport, I know I know it isn't just shared between you and me. It's a rapport that comes from you genuinely loving the culture and being uh, friends with the breakers. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, having come up in the scene in the UK at a time just before the internet, like I think when I started, the internet was was there, but it was kind of still for me, you know, um, re- you know, Reddit, that kind of stuff. Mm. You, you're kind of, you know, you have to dig for information. It's not just on YouTube. It was like you had to be a member of a forum to to get the information. So when you're coming up in that kind of a, a scenario, it's a lot of word of mouth, and with word of mouth comes more community. Um, so having come up in the scene with all the people from back in the day, you really did know people because you would see their names on forums. And then when you go to an event, you're like, oh, yeah, that's that guy. That's this guy. Oh. So having come up with all the dancers that are at the top of their game now or having seen some of them come up after me, for example, people like Sonny Brummett, uh, Karam Singh, you know, all these guys that represent the UK. I remember them when they were young. Mm. And now they're... So it's kind of funny because, like, there is a connection where I've seen them grow, elevate as dancers, go into other things, music, acting, you know, performing, massive business roles, whatever. But when you see people grow and you see them on a dance floor, of course you have a love for it because you've watched their journey. So it's it's amazing. Yeah, it really does come from a place of love. That's the that's the other thing about you and the the that rapport. Um, and you're right, having seen them from infancy, so to speak, to this widely publicised genre that has just exploded over the last few years. I mean, not only is it, I guess there's a sense of pride, but also this feeling of uh, inclusiveness. A hundred percent. It's it's open to all, right? So you could come from nothing to do with it and just be hanging around in it. And this is the funny thing. Most of us were just doing this because it was fun. So, like, nobody was trying to get, nobody was trying to get paid off of this to begin with. Like, mm. if we're talking about it from the real aspect, we did it because we wanted to impress girls. Let's be real. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like real talk right there. 
half the stuff there, we're like, most of us were nerds and geeks. Like, we were like, no attention. And we thought, you know what? If I do this, they're going to have to notice me, you know? Yeah. Like, if I'm spinning <laughs> on my head, if I'm beatboxing, like, people are going to go, yo, what was that? How would you do that? And you're like, oh, yo, it's cool. Don't worry about it. I did something like that. And then your friends will talk about, yo, this is my guy. He can do that thing where he slides on the head across the floor. Yo, 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 show us that. Then the girls will come over and be like, that's why most of us did it. And then it becomes like a drug that you just, you love the attention. You love the fact that you've gone and practiced something and you've got something on my man and you want to get better and da, 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 da. So then you travel, you go further, you find a field and then you find someone that's maybe just like you or just as good as you or maybe mm. even better then you want to test yourself against that person. So the, the culture just, again, it's about that testing. You're always testing. You're testing it on people in the crowd. You're testing it on the people of your, your, your homeboys. You're testing it on your peers. So that whole thing, you just build, 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 build. And then you realize you're still the same geek, but now you've got a name to it. So it's kind of like, wow. You've got you, a you secret really power. It. It's like a secret yeah. power, isn't it? For real, like, how how is it that like this is still fun to me? But then when I think look back and I'm look at how terrible I used to be when I first started, it's kind of like wow, I really the career has not been a career; it's been a journey, mm-hmm. and it's it's mad because that like I said that journey just quick like that. Twenty, I've been dancing for twenty five years, and it's just like I look back and I'm like twenty five years, and then I, it's even that bad that some of the kids don't know that I dance because they've only ever seen me MC, So they mm. don't know that I was a dancer. And I go, yo, you didn't know I could do that? And they're like, no, I thought you was just the MC." And I'm like, word, this means I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also, it also means that your legacy is transferable. Like, I get that with the podcast. People, most people don't cite, unless they're a certain age, they don't always cite the beatboxing. It's almost like you set a new stool for yourself. It's like a rebrand, isn't it? Right. 100% like, oh, yo, this guy does this. He's a salesman. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a salesman. He used to be a world champion skateboarder. Where? Check YouTube. Oh, my God. There he is doing yeah. a 900 flat ramp. It's, it's, it's crazy how, how time waits for no one, but it's, 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 a, it's a companion on that journey, man. Like, when you look back at the time that you've been in the thing, you can almost... It's almost like you were a different person. Maybe you had a different past. And it's good to reflect on that, but it's also so cool to see what you've come from. And I, I keep saying this to you, bro. For me, you don't even realize I remember meeting you and it was when I first started breaking. <laughs> and it was like, we had this, like, yo, we got the world-class killer killer coming down. You joking? That guy that does the beatboxing? Like, yeah, you know, he's even better than Rizal. Like, you know, I was like, no, what? And then they showed us a clip. And I was like, yo, this guy's coming to Northampton. I was like, what? There's me, 18, 19-year-old guy. And I get to meet you because I knew the organizer. And the organizer's like, yo. And then 20-something years later, who's just like, yeah, you're going to be hosting with Killer Keller. And I'm like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> the guy that I met that when I was a kid was a, a hero and like, blah, blah. And it's so fun that. In our culture, you can become friends and become boys with the people that you came up watching or, do you know what I mean? That like, yeah. there as, your, as your mentors or your inspiration or the, that level of professionalism or whatever. And I, for me, that, that just shows that it's full circle. I can retire now. I can, I can be done with this because I'm like, I'm at that point now where I'm thinking, I've met these people, I've gone on the journey. I'm now at the I'm now at the pinnacle of it where I've got to really see what the whole culture is about. And then now maybe one day some kid will say that to me, like he remembers meeting me when he was like four years old. And then now he's a, you know, he wants he's an MC and this, that, and the other. And he's like, one day he's gonna be like, Oh yeah, I remember you 50 when you came up to me in this event and you patted me on the head and said, Keep going, little bro, and blah, blah, blah. It's not happened yet, but and that's the way that but this it culture will. goes. So full circle. So yeah, full it circle. will. It will. You know what? It, it, and I remember meeting you as well, my brother. And, it, you know, it was a good time. The motivation, I think, that comes from hip hop as a culture. It's funny how you can step into the limelight and 
when it's your time to shine, just go, 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 go. But if you stick to the fault lines of what the at its core, what we do this for, you know, like you say, it, there is a there, there's a burgeoning new uh, generation, whether it's breaking, whether it's beatboxing, and I think social media propels that um, of n- new motivations as to why people want to get into this thing, um, but when you've had that taste of luxury of being at the forefront of something or successful in a commercial sense, hip hop's the only thing that, in my opinion, that you can go back to source. And like you say, you can meet your here. You can meet your heroes. Bro. It's mad. I remember seeing on TV, on MTV, when like, when MTV was MTV music, Mm. when, when what was it? Not the vibe, the source. What was what was uh, the other? Because they thought they brought MTV. Then there was another hip hop channel that come out, and started playing all kinds of actual, you know, urban as they call it, music. You know, black music. They were yeah. playing. I can't what the program was the box. Was it the box? That's right. Think, there was the a box. bunch, and then there was Channel U, and there's a whole yeah. heap of other ones. Channel U, bro. Like when these channels come out, yeah, I remember watching it, and then like Wu Tang Gravel Pit was on there, yeah. And then, like, four, was it two or three years ago, I met Raekwon. And I'm like, yo, it's Raekwon, bro. And he's like, yo, what's going on? I was just like, I was just like, yo, this guy, like, I couldn't believe it, right? And the one, the one one that I want to meet, and this is the, when this happens, I'm yeah, we're putting it out in the for now. We're putting it out there. Go, go. When I meet Buster Rhymes, my days are finished. You understand? Yeah. Like, I remember learning, I had Extinction Level Event and Genesis, and I remember knowing all the tracks, all the lyrics, yeah. running it back. Like, and I remember Hoops called me one time. There was Battle Bo- Battle Bad, Battle Born Bad. I can't remember what the, the name of the event is. And they were like, yo, we might need you to MC on that. And I said, oh, okay, cool. He said, you'll be opening for Buster Rhymes. I went, what? Mm-hmm. I said, are you mad? Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> the fee is, I said, I don't care about the fee. I said, if I get to meet Buster Rhymes, I'll fly myself out there. You don't, you don't even know. Like, like uh, yeah. this guy was my first rap artist. The first. Like, my mum didn't like all the swearing, so I had to listen to this in secret. This guy, if I met Buster Rhymes, it's game over. Like, and then I find out he's a Jamaican. I was just like, this is, this is, this is. So when that happens, the day I get to meet Buster Bus is is on, right? Flip mode squad, Bust arrives, all of them. Lee's a new that, school, all of that. Boom. History. Bro, you don't, you know, I'm telling you, that's in the universe. So I've put it out there now because I need to retire at some point and I can't do that until I meet Buster. And when I do, it's on. So, and this is what you're saying about how it comes full circle and how you can meet your idols and meet the people that you were influenced by it's it's that cool and i'm sure you've done it a hundred times where you've gone to different places and you're like yo that's this guy are you crazy you know what i mean but do you remember when we met africa baby bam uh in tokyo that blew my mind bro bro, that was mad yeah he was there I, i met i met in new york right another son of bamba just in the record shop. We was just there. I was just like, what? I said, really? He's like, yeah. yeah. I was just like, this is crazy. Like, mm-hmm. it's 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 just like that. I remember meeting Ken Swift and being like, this mm-hmm. is Ken. That I, you know what I mean? Partially named myself Ken uh, Swifty because of Ken Swift. Damn. I said, no. I was just like, that's not right, surely. And when I met him and I met his crew and Nako and all of the guys from, seven gems it was it was it was inspirational and that's the point we are so close to the source of what we do unlike any other culture out there many cultures out there that are that are there's not many cultures out there that are world changing like hip hop mm. because it's the world like it became something from nothing but everybody in other cultures embraced it even to the point of the lifestyle, the way they dress, what they actually do with their lives. Like you look at Japan, how they've embraced hip hop. Like it was years ago seen as they can't, you shouldn't be doing this. It's a Western thing, blah, blah, blah. But they didn't care. They were so moved by the culture that they 
change the way they, they live their lives, some of the people, to go against their traditions and their elders and their, their cultural standing. They, they embraced hip-hop. Mm. That's all changing. There's not many things that have been world-changing or world-influencing like hip-hop, but yet we're still close to the source. Looking at, looking at ballet or classical genres, we haven't got those people around still. We've got the founders of breaking still alive today. The founders of beatboxing alive today. The first people to do it, you know, yep. the graffiti that you can still find them. They're still out there. The first writers, you know what I mean? We've still got them. We can go and see them and talk to them direct about how did you start? And even if let's say they did pass away, well, one generation down, you've still got people that are connected, were connected to them. That, you can't find that in many cultures today. No. Not at any. all. No. The, the closest thing I could think of that would be similar to that would be something like maybe skateboarding. Yeah, or yeah. rock and roll. Rock and roll has a... a yes. But those are the two, like skateboarding and rock and roll. That's really all it... Because uh, arguably skateboarding, particularly for the 60s and 70s, really the soundtrack was rock and roll. So they do... You're right. They, they've got fault lines, haven't they? Yeah, you can't, going back further than that, what are the genres out there where, as a cultural worldwide phenomenon, where skating took took off, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I've mm -hmm. met, I've, I've met people like, because believe it or not, the history of like skating in England, in Northampton, Northampton had the first ever indoor skate park. It's called Radlands. And the likes of Bob Burnquist, Rodney Mullen, uh, Rune Glifberg, Rune Glifberg learned a 540 uh, twist in the Radland skate park when he was over. What? In fact, yeah, bro, listen, this is the history of skating. I know the owner of the old Radlands. I did my work experience there. The Inces, that was Chris Ince, the dad, Jenny, uh, D, uh, uh, Damien, and, and uh, Steve. Now, I did my work experience there for two weeks, right? And I found out that death box skateboarding was based in Wellingborough, which is the next town along to Northampton, right? Do you know Death Box Skateboard? Wow, of course, yeah. I mean, this is these these are names of my childhood, man. <laughs> Bro, Death Box Skateboarding became Flip Skateboards. And when you watch the Flip video where Spike, uh, what's, it? what's his name? Spike from the famous rock band. He's the MC of it, right? On the thank you at the end, in the credits, the fifth person down after everybody that's thanked, the fifth person is Chris Ince. That's how pivotal the skate park that was in my backyard, literally five minutes from my house, where I skated the history of it. And this wow. is what I'm saying. I've this is what I'm saying to you. I got that close to the history of it, where even on Tony Hawk skateboard in the game, on the first ever one, when Bob Burncross name comes up, he's doing a trick. It's at Radland Skate Park. That's how crazy it was. Yeah, wow. Mike Fee, skater, these guys. I've met so many pro skateboarders, even Jeff Rowley. I've met him. I met Danny um, Danny Wainwright, who had the highest ollie. I had an ollie competition against Danny Wainwright, who had the biggest ollie in the world, who was from Bath. He came to skate. I've been on some of the clips and some of these videos. That's how close that culture is. And other than skating and rock and roll, which is tied into skating, I can't think of anything where you can be that close to originators that are still alive today. Wow. So we're really blessed in hip hop for that. Yeah, and for that's sure. why I think that the, the culture is still moving so well. You know, well, you were born into the game. It's crazy. And it was all by accident. It's all by accident. It's so, like, it so so let's 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 start there. So so growing up, Northampton, big up yourselves, we love you. Um where did it all begin for you? Wow. Uh for me, I started I started skateboarding with a friend of mine. I think I went to Radlands a couple of times when I was like 12. And then at 15, I'd started rollerblading for some reason. God knows why. Uh, and I was like, I want to do flips out of ramps. So I started messing around with that. Uh, and then I came 15 and was like, do work experience. So I applied to Radlands, went down there, did two weeks there, painted the whole warehouse because like, I come from a place like if someone asks you to do something, you do it to the best of your ability. That's what my mum taught me. So mm -hmm. when it came to me painting the warehouse, I painted the whole damn warehouse. They never expected that. They were like, damn, you, 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 you don't mess about. 
So the work experience didn't start till 11 at night, 11 in the morning. Everyone else is there, had to be there for nine. They didn't open till 11. So I was like 11 o'clock till like five, six in the evening. But then I'd stay and skate. So we did that. And then after being like skating there for two or three years, getting really good at it, I remember seeing this guy called AD, AD King. And AD King was doing windmills on the ramp. And I was just like, yo. I've always wanted to be able to break. Where can I go and learn this? And AD's like, oh, yo, if you can come and do this, like we do we do some classes at the Sound House in town. So I'll go down there for a couple of like months, learning all these moves and stuff, start my own little crew called Allied Forces, teaching my friend's brother to dance and a couple of kids. And I like, just going along with AD met some other guys we all became friends started dancing together shout out to my crew flawless forms you know we started doing stuff together going to events then ad kind of like stopped doing it so much and kept like going oh yeah swifty's kind of taken over now he can do classes and teach and do this and do that and then just progressed and progressed and progressed until it was like you know i'm traveling and people are like oh do you want to host do you want to do this you know, it, it just grew and grew and grew. Um, but it all just started from that, just being in the right place, doing a bit here, staying with that, you know, and then it just kept growing and growing and growing. That's incredible. I mean, Northampton has got a golden child so far as bringing people in and uh, nurturing nurturing people within the scene that's i mean arguably that's why northampton has such a bright, bright spark in 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 the uk i hope so i mean i'd like to think i've had a part of it because you know there's been there's been times like there's a guy called um there's a guy called geo that um i taught when he was in school like i was doing a project like i was going to schools and teaching kids to dance. Mm. And, and literally, uh, he he came he came to my classes for like a couple of months. He came to my classes for a couple of months. And I uh, I basically said to him, like, you know, do you enjoy it? Blah, blah, blah. I said, yeah, yeah, I do enjoy it, but I prefer swimming. So I was like, okay, cool. You could do your swimming and stuff. He didn't want to come no more. That's cool. Turn the clock forward about eight years later. This guy's dancing. And I was just like, yo, Gio, I remember you. He says, yeah, I gave up swimming. I fell in love with dance after he taught me. Now, he's gone into commercial dance and stuff, and he's really good, but he still breaks. He can still throw some breaking moves. And he's like, you're my first teacher. You inspired me to become this dancer. He always tells me. Incredible. And I was just like, yo, this kid was only like 11 at the time, but I gave him that taste of mm. dance and being yourself and expression. And this guy was a champion swimmer, a champion swimmer. Like this guy was for the county or whatever. He was going places. Man gave it up and he's dancing. But now he's dancing in music videos and doing all this stuff. Man was getting on the Brit Awards and all of this kind of thing. And like, he's a serious guy, but he can move. And I'm like, you mean to tell me I had a little bit of influence in that? And I was just like, that's incredible. Even if it's just a seed. Like, yeah. I'm not taking credit for it, but to help have inspired him to do that. And there's so many kids that I've taught that have grown up and they're like, oh, yo, I can still do a six step. Like, I did a massive project with the schools. I wanted to throw in a, a dance event. And <clears throat> it's funny how this happened. Like, uh, there was a woman that worked. It's crazy how this, I can't even begin to. She worked in the car insurance place called Swinton. Right, right. There, talked to her when I was a dancer. Blah 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 blah. blah. She asked me to come to her daughter's birthday party and do a couple of moves for her kids Mm. at the pub. Paid me like fifty quid. I was just like, "Yeah, I'll do that. I'm getting paid." So I did that, and that was that. Years later, like I'm talking to Mark Dean, who's Inspiration FM. He like set up his own radio station in Northampton, first community radio station in Northampton. He set that up, and then. It was like, he said, oh, yo, speak to this woman, Anna. She's a counsellor for the local government. She's into supporting new ideas. She might help you. 
So I go see this lady. Who's the lady? Stop I know it. I see who's kid, and she's now become a councillor for local government under the MP. So I'm like, yo, Anna, can you help me? She says, yeah, I've got some money in a pot. If you go and teach at this school, one of my schools, I'll give you 500 quid to teach them, right, over the next couple of weeks. So I'm like, this is me thinking that. I was just like, yo, if I take that 500 bills, I said, can you get me a venue? She said, yeah, we can get you the local, the local Guild Hall for free. Well, I'll put it out, rent, we'll rent it out for you for free. So I'm like, so yo, I've got the venue. I said, okay, let me talk to my boys. I said, yo, can you come and DJ for me and my three judges? That's five, 400 pound, a DJ, three judges, and I've got a hundred pound prize money. And I said, let me teach the kids. So I'm teaching the kids for free, basically, mm-hmm. taking my, putting it into the event. And then, because they did me a favor as mates rates, then I charged on the door. So I got some money back from the people, but it was a light, cheap price. But we had the prizes. We had things made, blah, 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 blah. And the kids came down and did a performance at the event. So they performed. I trained them to do a performance. They came down, but then we had the event for the breakers. So I'm like, that's smashing. I said, cool. It's called Break the Shire, right? That was year one, 2015. Nice. Year two, I went back, right? And I said, let me get two schools and we'll have them battle. And then the kids can battle it out. They'll have T-shirts for a different crew. Each have a crew, blah, 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 blah. So then I got a thousand pounds because I had two schools. So then now the budget's gone up and the venue's gone up. Year four, one second. Year four, year two, year three, I think it was. Year three, I managed to get four schools. So now I've got 2,000 pounds. So now I can make sure that I've literally got a, a battle with two semifinals and then a final. Bro, I wasn't stopping there. I got to eight schools by the second year. What? The fourth, fourth year. So I got to eight schools by the fourth year. So by the fourth year, I'm at eight schools. And I'm literally going, yo, I've got the whole thing set up. I've got like... The whole, um, what's it called? I've got eight schools and I've done that for two years. I've got other dance schools performing. I've got like, yeah, performances by dance schools. I've got different battles. I've got the kids category and I've got the schools category. And I'm telling you, that was the movement. But now thinking about it, over the last six, seven years, I've now taught about, 12 different kids at schools to break. Wow. So there, so that's the influence it had. And then like, you know, that the last one I did was in 2017. So seven years after that, most of these kids have left school, but they all remember. And then like, some of them are like, oh yeah, you taught me to dance, blah, blah, blah. And I loved it. Now my kids go and dance. And I was just like, yo, are you serious? They're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. blah. So I'm like, this is insane. And that's, the influence like you could have taught a kid to break to beatbox back in the day and then they got inspired by it and then like you know now they're in their 20s and they're like yeah i, I run my own dj school or whatever yeah, or, yeah, I yeah. Like, or whatever just from that that little taste because i never think that i never think that if you if you get a little taste of something as long as it's to do with the thing, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's, that's right. why when I go and, and they're doing street dance, I never go, oh, yo, that's not breaking. I'm like, brilliant. You love dance. Did you know about this? Can I show you this? Can I do that? Da? Changing so their perception it, of it, but spoon feeding them without being too overpowering. Exactly. You don't have to be, yo, this is the only way to do this. You know, if you meet a kid in Africa and he's never heard beatboxing before, but he does something similar, yeah. you can be like, yo, this is what you're doing. You're doing amazing stuff. Let me show you this. Because that's happened with breaking. Kids all have seen breaking like on a snapshot and they think breaking is only flares and windmills. Yeah. So that's what, that's what they copy. And then you turn up and show them some footwork, their mind's blown because they're like, there's more to this? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Imagine if somebody's seen Dougie Fresh 
on a clip from a VHS from like the 1970s. And that's what they know of beatboxing. And then they meet you. Oh my God. Could you imagine the, the look of like, almost like a kid that's never been fed food before. Do you know what I mean? Could you imagine like the, the way that I would open up with like, there's next levels to this now. There's not just the sounds that Dougie Freshly makes. Look at the sounds that I can make that this guy makes. And it just opens their minds to stuff. That's right. It's, and it's, it, and, and it, even if you do that with just one person, then that's your mission brief complete. That's that done. Exactly. That's, that's the way I look at it, man. You, you never know the seed that's been planted. And that's why, you know, I always try to educate, show, you know, be like, talk to people, communicate, you know, the, the hip hop world is not just about showing, it's about like sharing information, you know, sharing history, sharing stories, all yeah. of that kind of stuff, you know? For real. I, I might just add at this point, if you're not watching and you're just listening, true to his, uh, his daily mission brief, he's doing a podcast whilst he's... <laughs> Whilst driving, and he's got it. He's got it going on as as we talk. He don't mess about, Swifty. You're a man that travels with undisputed, the B boy champs, Red Bull BC. What are you up to next, brother? What's going on? Next is wow. What is next? I I'm 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 about to I'm about to go. Where have we got next? The next competition. I'm doing something. I work a lot with a company called Street House Champs. Street House Champs is like uh, street dance uh, uh, competitions for young kids, different dance schools. Right. Um, and they have uh, team battles, they have solos, they have actual battles like, you know, breaking or they're not just breaking, actually. They have one on one battles where kids can dance whatever style they want to dance in and just, you know, they've got that level, then they win. Um, so we're doing that, I think. That's on the 14th of July in Gloucester. Then right. after that, that I'm hitting up that's breaking or dance related is the international uh, break dance event, which is IBE, which happens in the south of uh, the Netherlands. In a, yeah. In a, in a, uh, Heerlen. Big up so, Ty, by the uh, way. Hold tight, Ty. Yeah, Tyrone's, Tyrone's holding that down. Mario B, 45 Live Crew. Um, so one. I'm going to be back there as, you know, an MC and, and helping out run the event, you know, making sure that it keeps, that it runs smoothly. Uh, um, and that's going to be on, I believe it's the weekend of the 16th of August. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, it's the 25th anniversary, I believe, 25 years of IBE. Wow. So that's going to be interesting. There's going to be all sorts of stuff, live events, live musicians, live acts. Uh, obviously, Undisputed is going to be there. Um, so obviously they have... Uh, a circuit where uh, dance battles happen. Um, I mean, to be honest, if you want to see more about it, look out for uh, Street Culture TV's podcast because obviously yours truly will be throwing in a little review. Of my, a presenter uh, with the most. Yeah, holding it down. Obviously, I like to make sure I do that because it just shows people what they, not missed out on, but what they can be a part of the next year round. You know, we've done that with um, uh, Freedom City, where well, that, that was in uh, the Netherlands. Also, that was in a town called Utrecht, uh, a city called Utrecht. Um, you know, we've done it with UK Champs. We've done it with Tokyo. We went up there. We always like to, because he likes to show people what's going on around the world in that, you know, anything that's that street culture, whether it be music, whether it be dance, whether it be art, whatever, spoken word, whatever, always some of that interesting stuff. So I'm going to be reviewing that when I go. Um, but yeah, if you want to check it out, look at the Notorious IB on Instagram. Facebook is there. That's the next thing we're going to. Then I think later on in the year, we've got Norway. Um, that's definitely coming through. Maybe Italy. So other than that, yeah, we just have to keep keep posted. Keep Yo, looking. My guy is on it. And I'm so proud of you, man. I just, I love, I love the way you move. I love the way you embrace. And you know, your professionalism to its core, again, just going back to your family roots and your, your mother's upbringing, you know what I mean? You're, you're true. You honour you honor the culture um, and you don't stop until the job's done, which I massively value. Try to, man. Try to. You've got to keep it moving, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to love you and leave you because I know you're busy right now. Um, but Swifty, man, this will never be the last. We we are we're on grid every every other week at the moment. So let's let's keep it moving, brother, for the people out there. 
Yes, and everybody keep appraised because there's loads of stuff coming. Keep an eye on Sir Swifty on Instagram because I'm telling you now there's going to be loads of stuff coming up. Just you just keep your eyes open because I'm telling you now September's going to be the going to be the month as well. Trust me. You better keep your your calendar clear for September because Street Culture TV UK Champs Chief Rocker, we are coming. Trust me. Yeah, believe that. Swifty, thank you so much, my brother. You're a legend and a star, and we'll see, we'll, we'll see you soon. <laughs> all right, I'll see you in a bit. Peace out. Killer Keller Podcast, Ala in was out of fashion. Swifty tells you so, all right? You stay lucky, people. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. Don't talk to me and I wouldn't. Nice one, Swifty. Peace. Peace. Peace.